Hello, guys. Who played football, basketball, and childhood? Raise your hand, please. Okay, a lot of people. What's the you catch? were the first to answer. <laughs> catch the ball. It was fun to play, right? Years passed, but nothing changed. We are adults, but we do play games. So, let's play a game today. We already have two teams. This team, you will be shooters. This team, you will be troopers. There will be three levels in our game. On each level, I will ask you questions. Those of you who answer first will get a tasty chocolate from Sergei. <laughs> yes. The team that gets more chocolates will win and get a special prize. Do you want to play? Yes! yes! Excellent! The first question for you guys. According to statistics, an average age of a video game player is... Which do you think? Your ideas? 25? 35? 14? Not close. You were most close. You get rewarded for being smart. Sergey, help me please. Chocolate from Russia with love. Yes. And the guy who caught the ball. In front of me, he was a child. Give him a reward as well, please. Oh my God, okay. Yes, there will be a lot of rewards. Lots of questions first. Yes. On the average, players are 30, 35 years old. No children. It is time people spend 3 billion hours per week playing online games. It would be great to use that time for the better. Like raising security. That's what we are after. And it is possible. Games can raise secrecy. And today I will tell you how. How to raise secrecy? The first level of defense is a security product, of course. We are the best here. We have great antivirus, application control, device control, and other technologies. But the zero level of defense is a human. Because humans make mistakes. Because humans can switch the product off. For example, sometimes it happens with antiviruses. That are annoying. If people don't understand security rules, it's all for nothing. According to recent Deloitte Global Security Survey, 70% of companies named humans as their greatest vulnerability. They said that user awareness is one out of top three security initiatives for big companies for this year. Because user awareness reduces risks. Okay, now companies do understand that they need to teach security to their employees, but security education sucks. It's usually a lecture or an e-learning course or read here and sign here document. The measurement and feedback are limited. And the most important thing is boring. But millions of people adore playing games. They learn through games. The research shows that learning through games is effective both for children and adults. So why don't we use this approach to teach security? Gamification can raise user awareness and user loyalty to security policies. Gamification can engage people, teach it security, and allow to have fun while complying with security rules. So let's talk what gamification is, where it is used, and how we can use gamification in our products and get a competitive advantage. Gamification originates from game. What is a game? It is an activity to get entertainment, pleasure, and skills improvement. Who will recognize the game? How is it called? Yes, you get rewarded for great memory. This Mario game popular in the 90s. Do you remember what was in the game? Mario is required to save the princess in the castle. He passes the levels, gets mushrooms and stars, and kills the monster. What is gamification? It is an application of game elements and game thinking in non-game context to drive desired behavior. The aim is to engage people, motivate actions, and promote learning. It is a popular trend nowadays. Gamification 
is used by such giants as IBM, Cisco, Microsoft, Starbucks, Xerox, Deloitte, and so on. According to the Gartner Group, by 2015, 70% of all the biggest companies in the world will be actively using gamification in their business. And 50% of their innovation process will be gamified. Gartner says that gamification is effective for education, innovation, and replace performance. Why it works? I hope you remember your game experience. Games bring emotions, competition, experiment, and fun. And what is the most important thing? It works due to our physiology. Neurobiologists proved that a hormone, pleasure hormone, dopamine, is released in our brain when we get positive feedback, rewards, and skills improvement. Guys, um, there is a serious theory, science behind the games. I will not tell you the science. I will not tell you the details how to implement gamification. Today, I will just share the idea. And the idea is, let's use gamification in our products. Where is gamification used? Actually, it's not new. It has been around for quite a long time. Just now, more ways appeared with IT industry development. Who has Facebook account? Raise your hand. You are the first, and you get rewarded for being social. You're very quick. Excellent. Facebook is probably one of the most successful non-game game ever invented. It has implemented game mechanics and reward structures that keep a lot of people coming back several times a day. Gamification can be applied in many areas, but today we will talk only about gamification for security. Gamification is good for learning. Deloitte and Xerox companies know it and teach their employees exactly that way. The goal of gamification is to take the content that is usually presented as a lecture and add game-based elements like stories, challenge, feedback, rewards, and so on. It can be a full educational game or just game elements in the daily routine, like behaving safely. Why it is effective for education? The first reason, a game is a simulation model of some situation. There is a problem to solve for a player. The player makes decisions and then faces the results of their decisions. Users learn by confronting the consequences of their actions. For example, security actions. So, by simulating real security situations, like losing an encrypted notebook, we can help people to understand why security rules are required. We can help people to remember right decisions we can help people to become proactive. The second reason why gamification is effective for education, we have stories in games. People love stories. Guys, do you want me to tell you a story, a joke, instead of talking about security? Yeah. yeah. Once upon a time, he lived a security officer. His name was Jack. But that story is later our topic is gamification. Stories teach better than instructions. The research proves it. Stories provide the context. People remember details in the context, not separately. Education in the context is effective. Education in the context is effective. Of course, education through games is not necessary everywhere. In any case, it's just one of the ways to teach. But if applied appropriately, it brings magnificent results. The military, the aviation industry, the medical teams know it. That's why they rely on simulation for many years. Many years, the military use computer games for war simulations. And now there is a special game used to teach network security concepts for US Navy. A game is used 
to teach HIPA security rules. HIPA is a national compliance that lists requirements how to protect health information for medical organizations. Companies who used that game call it effective. By the way, such approach would be quite useful for PCI NSS and other compliances. Oh, I love this slide. Look at this game. It teaches how to avoid phishing. There is a small education at the beginning. This is anti-phishing field. He is required to choose good ones to swallow and reject the bad ones. Worms are your else. When you are stuck, mentor fish gives you advice. It is enough to play it once and spend 10 minutes for a new employee. This brilliant game was deployed in US Air Force, banks, healthcare, insurance companies. And they found that this approach led to 45% reduction in falling for phishing. I played this game. I actually recorded myself. I'm very proud of it because I found some tricks about fishing and the fish was really cute and the sound. I really like it. Who provides gamification, security education with gamification? Wombat. I showed you the movie about the fish. Besides, they provide games to teach email security, safe social networks, smartphone security and other games. EMC company uses their approach, Wombat's games to teach their employees. Another company, Aposi, is developing a cloud-based cloud platform to, gamified, to perform gamified security education. They told me that their platform will be available for integration to other products. Okay, Wombat and Aposi, they are educational experts. They are not security vendors. So there is no question what our competitors, security vendors, are doing in this direction. Uh, nothing yet. Oh, maybe I know nothing because they hide it. Anyway, the idea. Security education should be provided with a security product and use gamification approach. Today doesn't exist. Actually, education, security product with the education doesn't exist either with built-in education. It is usually separate. It's out of context. Guys, let's provide education in the context. I mean, with our products, we can easily do it. We can benefit from gamified education built in our products. How we can do it? By the way, do you know that our company uses gamification for quite a long time? Remember the fourth floor in Moscow headquarters? I'm, I'm talking about Kaskersky. Who knows what kind of gamification is used there? Raise your hand. Did you say it? And your clothes. Explain. It, it, it shows uh, who is who is the, the leader in uh, so through virus an analysts. Yes, you're right. You're totally right. You get reward for being very attentive and having good memory for Moscow trips. We have a leaderboard for our virus analysts. It shows who worked up more viruses. The press, press loves it. But let's to, um, come back to our topic. We have two aims. The first aim, to raise user awareness. The second aim, to raise user loyalty to security policies. How we can raise user awareness with gamification? We can teach security with short quests, security challenges, puzzles. For example, a role-play game provided by our employee security. The mission is to save your company from hackers. An employee chooses a role to be a hacker or a defender. And then the employees play with the computer or with each other, and actually it will be more effective because they will know how a real rival thinks. It shouldn't be a full game. Just short quests, maybe in free time. If it's interesting and funny, believe me, people will play in their free time. And Microsoft Story is a good example of this. If you don't know, ask me at the end, I will tell you. We can provide security challenges for new employees just to play it once and spend 10 minutes. We can provide puzzles and quests on a periodic basis for fresh security knowledge. It will be effective to provide education in the context. 
we can easily do it in our products. For example, DLP, we have been already thinking about it. Or we can do it in our antivirus. Look, a user is caught by phishing link. We cannot show a user a dial as it happens today, but we can provide small education. And a game, like anti-phishing feel or something else, to enhance assimilation of information, to remember. By the way, we could provide not our own education. I mean, we are security experts, not teachers. But we can make friends with the educational experts and integrate it to our products. We can go further. We can become a part of real games. Imagine this seems a world of Warcraft. The next quest for a player. The player is required to pass through a door. This is a special door. There is a misprint on the door. Not a Facebook door, but something like this. It's a vision door. By creating security levels in popular games, we can easily spread security knowledge without intention and get some here. Okay, our second aim how to raise user loyalty with gamification. Just some ideas. We can say thank you to the users who comply with policies. It's in details, but it is pleasant. People feel pleasure from document release, remember? We can give security points to those who don't abuse policies, and the company will decide how to convert the policies into some real stuff. It will be easier for security officers to motivate users this way. We can provide users with the ability to build things. Imagine a screensaver. You get fish when you behave safely. For special achievements, you get an exotic fish or a shark. When you abuse policies, one fish dies. This is crazy. Everybody can see it. So everybody can see how many or how few fish you have. Or not a fish. You could grow a tree or perform a car tuning or build a castle. Many ideas. Except for competition and reputation. It's a good way of self-demonstration for people. Remember Tamagotchi? We can have security ratings and look, we can gamify our car in dashboard and make it leaderboard. We can provide security ratings and show the security statuses in public. Imagine an avatar, an OCS, Office Communication System or ICQ or Skype or something else. The avatar changes depending on the user's security rating. For example, when I have a good security rating, I have a normal avatar. But when my rating is bad, <laughs> if I know that my colleagues see my face like this, believe me, I will do my, my best to restore my normal face. And by the way, do you know that reputation is an ancient, one of the most powerful tools to influence behavior? Why reputation is effective for security? Security role star Bruce Schneier yeah. wrote the whole book about it. So you could read. Okay, I have a question for you guys. Imagine you are tired after the busy working day, you get out of subway and sit this. Who will use the escalator? Raise your hand, please. With me. <laughs> okay, okay. Who will use the stairs? You are the first, you get reward for having a healthy style, style of life. And now let's have a competition. Teams, we have a serious mission here, to improve the health of people. Because the majority will use the escalator, and we need to change it. Our challenge is to make people use the stairs, even if the escalator is working. Attention, this is a real case, it was solved. And those of you who know how it was sold and where, please don't help us. So the team's challenge to make people use the stairs if the escalator working. You will have two teams to generate your ideas, so we'll measure the time. Good ideas will bring your rewards. You can win. So my first idea will be to pay money. It's obvious. Who else? 
Music. Okay, good idea, Sergey. Help us, please. We will have a lot of rewards, I guess. You have more light. You have more light in the stairs than less in the escalator. Hmm? Light. The, the stairs are brighter than the uh -huh. escalators. So, I will show you the right answer. Not, actually, it's not the right answer. For example, my colleagues, uh, they offered such an idea to make the escalator going slower. So that the people who use the stairs, they will feel faster. This will be some kind of competition. Okay, how it was sold in Sweden? The fun theory created by Volkswagen used gamification to feel better. Let's drink after the next presentation. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you.